welcome to our service today to those who are gathering in the church building and also those who are joining us online. I don't know about you, but this week has been the week when I've noticed that the nights are drawing in. It is also the week when we have seen a significant increase in the COVID infection rates. And from tomorrow, the rule of six comes into our lives. The good news is, is that the rule of six does not affect our acts of worship. So we will be able to continue to gather safely and to pray. So let us begin our worship by saying the following verses from Psalm 103 together. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful toward those who fear him. And as we pray, we reflect on the week that has passed and ask the Lord for his forgiveness and healing. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our final reading. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 18, the parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wants to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had he sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. 
The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. These are the familiar words of the Lord's Prayer, a prayer that many of us pray at least once a day. At the beginning of the pandemic, probably just before we went into lockdown, when we were being encouraged to, uh, to wash our hands frequently, and to wash them for at least 20 seconds. One of the suggestions was to say the Lord's Prayer as you washed your hands. Now I have to say, six months on, I am still doing that. So I'm praying this prayer many times a day. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. But what is happening as we say those words? Are we just going through the motions? Are they just words that we say? Are we saying the words without thinking? In this week's Gospel, Peter asks Jesus how many times he should forgive his brother or sister who sins against him. Seven times? Jesus tells him, not seven times, but 77 times. In real, real life, as we rub up against each other. In real life, as we hurt one another. As the consequences of sin takes its toll on our closest relationships, we may cry out, I cannot forgive anymore. I have forgiven so many times before. As I was thinking about this question, the, the image that came to mind, do you, you know those sort of competitions that you go, when you go to a summer fair or something like that, and there's a jar of sweets, and you have to guess how many sweets are in the jar. Imagine a jar full of sweets as being a jar, not of sweets, but of forgiveness. And maybe ask a different question. How full is your forgiveness jar? Over the years, I have heard people who have been sinned against in many ways that I could never imagine. A precious child being murdered by a terrorist bomb. A precious husband being murdered by a rampaging mob. A precious wife being betrayed by the one she loves 
and who promise to love her till death us do part. Where does forgiveness come from when you have been hurt so badly? How do you forgive when you have been wounded so deeply? Our example is Jesus. Jesus hung on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. It sounds so easy. One simple word, forgive. But like sorry, a very difficult word to say with our lips and to mean wholeheartedly. No matter how hard forgiveness is, giving and receiving forgiveness is healing and life-giving. Some of you may know the story of a lady, a Dutch lady called Corrie Ten Boom, and I just want to share something that she wrote on forgiving. It was in a church in Munich that I saw him, a balding, heavy-set man in a grey overcoat, a brown felt hat clutched between his hands. People were filing out of the basement room where I had just spoken, moving along the rows of wooden chairs to the door at the rear. It was 1947 and I had come from Holland to defeat a Germany with the message that God forgives. It was the truth they needed most to hear in that bitter, bombed out land. And I gave them my favourite mental picture. Maybe because the sea is never far from a Hollander's mind, I like to think that that's where forgiven sins were thrown. When we confess our sins, I said, God casts them into the deepest ocean, gone forever. The solemn faces stared back at me, not quite daring to believe. There were never questions after a talk in Germany in 1947. People stood up in silence, and silence collected their wraps. In silence left the room. And that's when I saw him, working his way forward against the others. One moment I saw the overcoat and the brown hat, the next a blue uniform and a visored cap with its skull and crossbones. It came back with a rush. The huge room with its harsh overhead lights, the pathetic pile of dresses and shoes in the centre of the floor. The shame of walking naked past this man. I could see my sister's frail form ahead of me, ribs sharp beneath the parchment skin. Betsy, how thin you were. Now he was in front of me, hand thrust out. A fine message for our mind. How good it is to know that, as you say, all our sins are at the bottom of the sea. And I, who had spoken so glibly of forgiveness, fumbled in my pocketbook rather than take his hand. He would not remember me, of course. How could he remember one prisoner among those thousands of women? But I remembered him and the leather crop swinging from his belt. I was face to face with one of my captors and my blood seemed to freeze. You mentioned Ravensbrook in your talk, he was saying. I was a guard there. No, he did not remember me. But since that time, he went on, I have become a Christian 
I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there. But I would like to hear it from your lips as well, Fraulein. Again the hand came out. Will you forgive me? And I stood there. I, whose sins had again and again been forgiven, and I could not forgive. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow, terrible death simply for the asking? It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand held out. But to me it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives has a prior condition, that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. I knew it not only as a commandment of God, but as a daily experience. Since the end of the war, I have had a home in Holland for victims of Nazi brutality. Those who were able to forgive their former enemies were able also to return to the outside world and rebuild, rebuild their lives, no matter what the physical scars. Those who nursed their bitterness remained invalids. It was simple and as horrible as that. And still I stood there, with the coldness clutching my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Help, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand, I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands. And then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, my brother, I cried, with all my heart. And for a long moment, we grasped each other's hands, the former guard and the former prisoner. I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. As Corrie ten Boom found out, forgiveness is not an optional extra. We are commanded to forgive those who sin against us. I wonder how full is your forgiveness jar? Let us pray. Forgiving God, I thank you for forgiving me when I say sorry to you again, again, and forever. Please show me how to be ready to say sorry to you, to say sorry to each other, again, again, and forever. Please teach me more about your wonderful, forgiving love, again, again, and forever. Amen. I'm going to play a Tese version of the psalm that we started our service off with this morning, Psalm 103. The words are on your sheet, so as we listen, please look at the words.
Please stand as we affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray that we learn to forgive the way our Father forgives. All loving Father, you are good and patient, compassionate, loving and merciful with us. You forgive us all that we owe. Let your pardon bring us much joy and hope and help us to forget and forgive readily the debts, often so small, that others owe us because of the wrongs they have done to us. You have restored us to life. Help us to share your life and love with all we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. As we look out into the world, where there is so much injustice, help us to bring justice and mercy to our world, finding new ways of bringing your love in practical ways to those who need it most. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the vocation of marriage that it is joyful. We pray for couples that are not finding that joy, who may be living in a loveless relationship. Into those situations, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be poured out so that these relationships are relationships of mutual love, joy and support. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. In a moment of silence, we bring those people who are known to us and we ask for your healing presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who mourn. We continue to pray for Sandra as she grieves the death of Derek. We give thanks for Derek's life and all that he meant to Sandra and those who knew him and loved him. Lord, in your mercy. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It has been great to worship with you this morning. Next week's service will be a service of Holy Communion. 
So I conclude our service with these words. Go in the steadfast love of the Lord. Keep Christ in your hearts always. Bless the Lord and do his will. Amen. Amen.